The Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Meet the Scholars with your host, Senior Student Fellow, Grace Riley. Hello and welcome to Meet the Scholars. My name is Grace Riley and today the Institute for Faith and Freedom is very happy to welcome Dr. Jeffrey Herbener. Dr. Herbener is a professor of economics at Grove City College. His main research focuses include monetary theory and policy, business cycles, capital and interest theory, the theory of cost, asset valuation, and the Austrian School of Economics. Dr. Herbener, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. Just to start, what brought you to Grove City and what makes Grove City College so unique? Well, I was uh, hired as a professor of economics at Washington Jefferson College. Uh, I went there in uh, 1986. And over the 11 years that I was there before I came to Grove City in 97, I became increasingly dissatisfied with the, with the kind of lack of uh, serious philosophical and theological foundations for uh, academic endeavors at Washington and Jefferson. I woke up one day and I thought to myself, you know, I wouldn't want my sons to go to Washington and Jefferson College. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I knew about Grove City College because of its uh, long tradition in Austrian economics. And of course, I was uh, even more interested in the Christian uh, foundation for doing academic work at Grove City College. So when an opening came up uh, in 1997, I was, I was eager to jump at it. And at the time, the president of the college was John Moore, who happened to be an economist who was sympathetic to uh, the Austrian uh, orientation toward uh, economic analysis. And he was eager to kind of reconstitute the, uh, bolster the tradition that Gross City had had in this, uh, in this approach. So it was a very excellent fit, and it's been a wonderful experience uh, all these years. Yeah, absolutely. And Grove City certainly is unique and is so wonderful in the way that they incorporate faith into all of their academic endeavors. So in your classroom and in the study of economics as a whole, how can faith be incorporated? Yeah, we start really at the most basic level, uh, the, which Christians would always begin with as they think about uh, God and their relationship to God. So we start with this um, fact of God being creator and us being creatures, and then we try to work out the nature of uh, human beings as creatures, how God has designed us to interact with each other and to, and to of course, interact with Him. And uh, by bringing all of this together, we, we base all of economic uh, thought on the real, the, you know, the reality of, uh, of this uh, creator-creation relationship, and then and then the kind of horizontal relationship we have to each other. Economics is really just about human action and interaction. Mm -hmm. And so that's the foundation of it. And then we build the particulars of economics on that. That's really great. And just to look <clears throat> more into the Austrian approach, can you break that down in that area of study and describe why Grove City's approach to this and focus on it is so unique? Mm. It's because the Austrian approach also accepts this uh, realist beginning point. And so a lot of um, alternative approaches in economics are only interested in starting right off with data studies. And so they'll try to correlate data sets and they'll establish models to try to predict the path of data and so on and so forth, which is all relevant and interesting field in economics. But if it isn't grounded in some kind of more uh, uh, f uh, firm uh, foundation, a kind of uh, uh, framework within which it can develop I as part of an overall worldview that people have, well then we think it isn't really very robust. So, so that's why we have this, this orientation toward the Austrian school because unlike other schools, they just accept this basic reality of human action and they try to work out the logic of what it means to engage in human action as human beings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and then looking at that, a lot of young people, and I say this as a young person myself, um, but a lot of studies have shown that people in my generation are trending more towards 
having positive feelings towards socialism and trending towards supporting socialist candidates and socialist ideas. Mm -hmm. What is your response to that and what message do you have for young people about why it's important to understand economics fully and the impacts that economics mm -hmm. inevitably has on everyday life? Well, we, we are in fact, we're just talking about this question in class today. It, it's really the uh, issue of the actual realizable effects of various kinds of social arrangements that is the forte of economics. And so it's one thing to talk about, you know, how we could have socialism and everyone would be equal and we'd have equity and so on and so forth. But the question is, what in particular uh, would the state do in order to bring about the, these valuable goals? And when and if and when they could bring about these valuable goals, would there be any trade-off in terms of things that are given up in order to achieve these things? Mm -hmm. And that's really where economics comes to bear upon this question. And this is where the Austrian approach has a particular um, a forte in, because it is based on the reality of the world as it is and, and doesn't try to erect uh, utopian schemes for social life. Yeah, and I think that pointing towards that why is actually the answer as you're explaining that I think when young people are able to understand and approach those questions of well what is behind this what has to happen for certain implications to happen I think um, figuring out that why so for young people to actually understand economics more deeply is the opportunity that we have in hopefully shifting that back the other way to a more full understanding of the reality of economics and what mm. works and doesn't. Because as you're explaining, there is a fact-based reality of what works and what doesn't in um, economics, though it seems like a lot of people um, think that there isn't. That's right, and, and you even see the kind of ebb and flow of this uh, historically. You see previous socialist movements, right, and then they, they actually get in power and try and things sort of fall apart and then there's this reaction and so, we need to be ready uh, in that period, right, to uh, to show people what what uh, what is true and about mm. the world. Yeah, absolutely. And there certainly is a pattern from history that we can learn from um, and break down and look at to understand that more. But before we close, can you tell me a bit about where people can find your work um, and wh if there are any projects that you'll be working on that people can look forward to in the future? Right, uh, so most of my uh, academic work is uh, associated with the Ludwig von Mises Institute. And so if you just go to their website, you can search around and find most, you and know, a lot a of good my one. publishing. That's a good one to understand a lot of what we're yeah. talking about. And then I, I have a series of uh, video classes on uh, Tom Wood's Liberty Classroom. So again, you can just visit and sort of uh, uh, indulge in <laughs> looking at some of the, some of the uh, courses that I put together for Liberty Classroom. Great. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Herbener. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Meet the Scholars. We hope that you'll continue to come back and watch the remaining episodes that we will have coming out over the next few weeks. Thanks so much.